Okay, so here's another toy I have. This is in 1983-84, I think, Onkyo TX26 receiver, 40 watt per channel. This is actually going off to a family member on the East Coast that needs a nice little receiver. Everybody kind of poo-poos these things because it's, oh, it's the 80s. 80s are bad. Well, we take the cover off. We actually find out that it's not really all that terrible of a thing. It's got a transformer. It's got ample reserve power supply. I think there's a 10,000 microfarad at 50 volts. It's got an SDK 4863 on a real heat sink. It's got speaker overload fuses. It's got a decent digital tuner with a memory to it. It's got easy to use front panel potentiometers, a physical input selector switch rather than an analog switch matrix. It's not a terrible thing. Uh, and it's made in Japan, which I can't say for the newer Onkyos. However, it has one design flaw. And that design flaw is this really uber cruddy low current protection relay, which we have to replace before we send it off. These styles of relays don't have enough latching force, and so it's very common that they have issues, uh, which causes channels to drop out at low volume and a variety of other distortion and noise artifacts. So we're going to uh, replace that with a modern high current relay, and I'm going to show you how to do that. But the first thing we need to do is get the bottom off and get the old relay out. You can see with the bottom off, it's a really nice layout. The quality of the board is really good. We see that some things run a little bit warm, but the solder hasn't busted loose except in these two places down here. A little bit of a ring around the lead there we'll take care of. I bought this from the original owner that bought it brand new, so <clears throat> I'm really only the second person to, to use it. I'm definitely the first to be inside it. So we'll get the relay unsoldered and we'll resolder a couple of those connections. And then uh, I'll address putting another relay in it. So here's the relay when it's out. It's a 40 watt per channel amplifier and they're using a 2 amp relay. Which is really kind of pathetic. Uh, so the things that are important when replacing a relay. Obviously form factor is going to be hard to find something. And you wouldn't want something of the equivalent since the equivalent was crap. So what I want to replace it with is this big scary Omeron 8 amp relay. 24 volt coil just like the other one. Much more power handling capability and it's hermetically sealed so we don't have to worry about uh, moisture and stuff corroding the contacts. And this amplifier isn't going to put enough power out to kill those contacts either. But there's a problem. Uh, not only physically mounting but also wiring. <clears throat> now if you have an understanding of how the machine works Wiring shouldn't be an issue. Here are the fuse holders for the speakers. So, given the fact that the traces follow to these two points, this is the output point of the relay. Now, the middle terminals might be the coil, or they might be the input point. They have a little diode soldered across here, so I'm going to assume that that's a current directing di uh, uh, polarity directing diode for the coil. So very likely those middle terminals are the coil, and these terminals here are the input from the amplifier. But you need to make sure of that. So let's get a meter and double check that. So with our meter, we're going to measure the coil resistance. And let me see if I can prop this up so you can see it. There we go. And we thought that these two pins here were the coil, so that's where we measured. So we got just under a uh, kilo ohm for the coil, 994. Also make sure that the coil resistance is close to or slightly higher than the original. This is 700 ohms versus 900 and something. So then you have to hope, or actually you shouldn't hope, you should look up the driver transistor firing the relay to see what current handling capability it has. And you can calculate the amount of current it's going to draw by using the supply voltage, which in this case is 24 volts, and then using Ohm's law, which is the 700 ohm uh, resistance variable, to figure out what the current draw is. Now, I've already figured out that the trans transistor they're using, uh, which is a uh, 2SD400, uh, 
uh, really has enough current to power that relay, so that's not an issue. But uh, make sure, you can look up the data sheet for the transistor online and figure out what the current handling capability is to make sure you're not going to kill the driver transistor. Nothing like putting a relay in and then a month later having the transistor fail and the sound go away. So now that we know what the pinout is and what the uh, working coil resistance is, we'll work on wiring this thing up. You know something I just realized? I don't have to do a fancy mount on this. The dust was covering the optional ports for the type of relay that I'm using. So let's take the solder off and pop the relay in. And then uh, very likely that will do it. Can't believe I didn't see that before. Sometimes there are things in life that are staring you blankly in the face and you just don't see them. And here I was going to do something fancy for you all. But now all I have to do is remove the solder from the uh, pads. And it looks like just drop the relay in. But we'll double check. They probably put the crummier type relay in because of a cost cutting thing. This board obviously had some other options on it too that were removed. So, just so you can see here, let's grab our relay and orient it correctly. There's the hole. And this in fact just drops right in. Wonderful. So now we can solder this bad boy up. I'm going to bend the tabs over to hold it there because it wants to fall out on me. much better than two. Okay, so the relay's in. Now, while you're in here, if you haven't done it already, it would be wise to chemically treat the switches and controls, particularly these ones back here that are attached to the rods, that's your input selector switch. There's two here, and then there's two more under this board. You can flip the machine over and get to them. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the thing up on its butt. <clears throat> and then I've got the deoxit D5 pump. And I just do two squirts in here, assuming I can prime the pump. There we go. And then one and two, and then we'll work these buttons a little bit. Okay, and underneath you've got tone controls back here and these loudness and muting switches. So let's um, focus, there we go, squirt a little in there, silly thing doesn't want to prime for some reason, I might just grab another bottle. Work them back and forth a bunch. Get another can. <clears throat> this one's in much better shape. And then there's the treble control back here. This is kind of the boring part of it. I'm actually a little bit disappointed I was going to show you some mad skills about mounting and wiring relays, but that's for another time. It'll save me tremendous time too because I got a lot of work to do today. Work those little micro switches. Uh, 
Okay, then we'll flip the machine over. And we'll get the volume control over here. All right, and then there's the top two selector switches. These guys here. If ever there was a way to get carpal tunnel, this was it. Arthritis in my hands is bugging me. Okay. And lastly, we'll do the speaker switches, which are those guys right there at the top. This up so that you can see what I'm doing here. There's a little vent on the top here that you inject the cleaner into. And then we'll work them. After we're done with this, we'll fire it up and test it. Before we do that, I want to mention one more thing about early digital tuners. Grab the phone here. Sorry about that. See that little green thing poking back there? That is a supercapacitor. It's 0.047 farads at 5 volts. That's your memory battery. That's what uh, keeps the tuner memory, the presets, and all the other stuff that's pertinent to the digital display. And that has a tendency to fail. Now, I'm not going to replace that because, well, it still holds memory. But more so than that is that it's an utter nightmare to take this panel off and get to it. And although I'm giving him a favor by giving this to him, uh, I'm not going to go crazy on it. So... If you have memory problems, if this thing ain't keeping presets, take a look for that. It's usually on the front panel tuner board or somewhere on the tuner board back itself, like it would be back here around where the uh, PLL circuit is. So let's get it hooked up and let's run it. All right, so the moment of truth. Let's turn the set on. Listen for the click. All right. So I got this hooked up to a load bank and then uh, signal generator scope so let's go to the tape one turn the speakers on let's see here make sure I got this on the right input I have no sound Interesting. Got it hooked up to the right spot. Let's see if I get manual. I have no sound. Hmm. All right. So now I need to look at the pinout and make sure I got it right. Okay, so the problem was, is that in my haste, I neglected to see that there's supposed to be a jumper uh, between this point here and this point here. Because what's happened is, is this point here, which was the input part of the old relay, there's a connector, a solder pad here for a jumper that goes between these two points, which is missing. So all I need to do is install the jumper 
and that will fix it. That's why we weren't getting any sound. All in my haste, always take a second look. We can see also top side that there are jumpers J511 and 512. So let's stick something in there. Okay, so now you can see there that 511 and 512 are jumpers in them. So let's try this again. Okay, we got a click. And we have sound. Cool. Ah, low frequency extension button's kind of twitchy. I'll have to take care of that one. Otherwise, it looks good. Tap on the relay and no, no jitter or nothing. So there you have it. We got a nice beefy 8 amp relay in there where there used to be a 2 and made the corrections to the board necessary to make that relay run because obviously dropping it in doesn't just work and in my haste I just kind of uh, overlooked that. So uh, if you got an old Onkyo with one of these awful little relays in it now you know what you can replace it with. The uh, Omron part number, if I can zoom in here so you can see it, come on it's not hard, it's lettering. Let's zoom out a little. I don't like this camera. This camera does not want to focus. Okay, so it's the Omron 2 G2RG 2A4 24 volt. I forget what the Mauser prefix is, but it's a uh, three digit dash G2RG. Dash 2A4 dash DC24. That's where we got them last time. You can also get them through DigiKey. Uh, nice little relay. Uh, it's a great replacement for a lot of machines uh, that use this form factor. So, uh, anyway, I hope the uh, video has been helpful to you guys. This is a service on an Onkyo TX26. This one's getting shipped off to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And uh, hopefully, my cousin Dave will enjoy this very well along with his nice KLH speakers I got for him. So, thanks for watching the video. More stuff to come soon.